All right, first up this morning, our next guest says she had a wonderful and uneventful childhood. Then in college, she developed a mysterious <laughs> panic disorder. That struggle launched her into a search for answers for more than a decade. So how did she eventually heal and decide to help others? Well, Ann C. Sullivan wrote this book. It's called Unsatisfied, Finding Contentment in a Discontented World. And we are excited to welcome Ann to the Yellow Couch and chat about finding that peace and purpose and how she can help you find it as well. Thanks for being here. It is great to be Good here. Good morning. Thanks for having us. You guys are so yeah. perky so early. Oh, yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah, you emailed me yesterday and said, you guys are so cute. And I was like, I wasn't on the show yesterday. <laughs> I saw a clip, but then I'm hallucinating. There, there, <laughs> no, I saw there was a segment that we re-aired, so you yeah. did see yeah. us. That's it's great to meet well, you. Well, you are perky. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's it's fascinating. I love the fact that you say you had an uneventful childhood because I, I think oftentimes people don't and they think that's what leads to issues later in life. So the fact that you had a pretty happy and uneventful childhood, I think would shock people that then you develop this mysterious uh, panic disorder come college age. Right, exactly. And you know, you look for those conventional Triggers. answers. You think of all these different things people talk about. But for me, after 13 years of struggling, and I'm a researcher by nature, just trying to figure out what was wrong with me, I went to counselors, doctors, all those different things. Um, my answer was finally found with an internist who was able to treat the adrenaline problem that was in my system and that quieted everything. So oh. what that did was give me all those years to truly understand the ins and outs of anxiety. I mean, in college I was studying history and, and education, philosophy, the social sciences, theology, and, and all of that. And uh, of course, I didn't pick the topic of anxiety, it picked me, yeah. because it was a 13 year struggle with a panic disorder. And it just taught me a lot about, um, I, I know more about it than I'd like to know, let's put that, so I'd like to help. Well, yeah. and I appreciate, you emailed me, what I mentioned yesterday, and one of the things you said is, please mention my anxiety and panic, because so many people have it, a lot of young, mm -hmm. too many young people today, and I shared with you, that, and I've talked about it before on the show, I also had an anxiety disorder and panic attacks, and was treated for about 10 to 13 years also, and finally found answers in cognitive behavioral mm -hmm. therapy. I think people mm -hmm. come to their answer healing in different ways. But I appreciate you, you being willing to share the struggle because I think people look at women, especially who seem to kind of have it together, yeah. and they think, oh, they, they can't possibly struggle with something like anxiety, which seems like nervousness. Right. Well, I was excited when you told me that yesterday, you shared that with me, because I think you and I are both examples of you know, it can it can be with anybody. It can be in any situation, professional people, private lives, whatever. Um, I do a lot of speaking at conferences and colleges, churches, uh, corporate events now because I'm seeing that it is such an incredibly invasive problem. I think I read in Business Insider it was like, you know, $300 billion is spent a year, uh, employers spend because of apt absenteeism and, and people who are just struggling with anxiety, their family members, they don't know what to do with it. So. I'm all about creating a safe space so that you can be honest because here's what's happening. We've got a lot of people self-medicating. We've got a lot of people coming up with all sorts of answers because they're just embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And the safe space, I think, is for us to learn how to have a good poker face when somebody approaches us and tells us their problems. And, you know, we say, I'll help you. You know, let's see what we can do together. Don't judge them. You know, we think we're not judgmental, but, you know, just that lifted eyebrow will do yeah. it. So safe space to look for answers and find them. Mm -hmm. can, can you kind of address, because I think the, the words anxiety and panic attack are thrown out there uh, very easily these days. And so maybe address the difference between the two and, or, or exactly what you experience. Yeah, you know, and I, you're right. It's sort of a euphemism for I was standing at Starbucks, I ordered all this coffee, and then I couldn't find my wallet. Right. I had a panic attack. Yes. No, that is not exactly. a panic attack. Anxiety is a natural thing. It's something we all uh, have. And in many ways, that adrenaline is a good thing. It's a powerful thing. It helps us when we need it. But when these things start to uh, invade your entire body, mind, spirit, everything, and you cannot function, then it's time to get help and when it's a lingering problem. So to be able to, the cognitive therapy, which is of course exposure therapy, you know, in that, um, but also, you know, there is a place and time for medication and I think controlled, it's a very good thing. So um, yeah, I, I address a lot of that in, in this book. You have so many great quotes from your book and I'm worried we're about to run out of time, but a few quotes and then I want you to address how we can be satisfied in a, a discontented world. You say truth may not be trendy, but it is a game changer. You say that changing our behaviors, this I love, um, begins by changing our thoughts. There's so much power in our thoughts and that we've been designed to enjoy life and embrace it fully. 
Yeah, and if you're struggling with anxiety, depression, any of those things, that one you don't believe. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a very lonely place. It's a very frightening place to wonder, you know, in this whole idea of mental illness being such a scary thing, there's so many dimensions of it and we all struggle with things. But I think to, to really find a satisfaction in life is to find exactly who you're supposed to be, find your voice. I mean, all those years, I did not want to spend 13 years learning about anxiety, but it's given me this opportunity then to find the satisfaction in life that is to be who I am and who I've been called to be, which mm -hmm. is to, to speak to people and to connect with people. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I think we all have a story in us and oftentimes that story is already there and we, we need to expose it. So I love that you're doing that. Um, people can learn out more, learn more about you and get a copy of your book on Satisfied at anncsullivan.com for more. Thanks for joining us. That went by too fast. Me. Yes, it did. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you appreciate so much. It. Appreciate it.